Be Quiet is very particular about their name. Specifically, it's a lowercase b, a lowercase q, and exclamation points, and anything else will get you yelled at. They're also very particular about their cases, and that is to focus primarily on silence. This is something we've talked about a lot in the past, and now with the Be Quiet Silent Base 601, we'll be revisiting the topic of how Be Quiet's cases perform both thermally and acoustically, which is their primary selling point. We also have a bit of an interesting discussion to get into, perhaps in a future video. At what point do you hit diminishing returns with silence to the point where you could just run a more airflow-focused PC with slower fans? Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake and the View 71 enclosure. The View 71 is a full tower case that's capable of fitting three video cards in most configurations. It's also one of the better cooling cases in our recent case testing bench lineup. The View 71 has hinged tempered glass doors on either side that make it easy to open and show off, and it comes with at least one rain fan, though you can get the RGB version if you prefer. Learn more at the link in the description below. The entire O1 series from Be Quiet is a follow-up series, so they had the Darkbase Pro 900 conveniently not named O1 in that instance. It was the 900 Rev 2, but the 601 is a follow-up of the previous 600. And there are a few updates. We talked about them at Computex when it was announced, but let's go through the case as it's, it is featured today. It's about 130 bucks on Newegg in the US anyway, so that puts it on the lower end versus what we reviewed the last few weeks, but it is still certainly one of the more expensive cases. The big feature here for this case is going to be all the noise damping features. We talk about these in our thermal and Acoustic testing, Patrick's build notes coming up. We'll also have more information. But this foam is some of the thickest foam we've ever seen in a case. The way this stuff works, we'll talk about more in a second. But you know, the very basics, it primarily helps with high frequency noise. So things like fan whine, potentially a little bit of coil whine, whereas the panel thickness is what will help you with lower frequency noises. So uh, more of like a lower hum. So the foam doesn't really do a whole lot for you there compared to the higher frequency noises. Now the one thing I want to go back on here and point out is that, well, first of all, this mounting uh, procedure is pretty nice. They did a good job on this with the case where it slots in, which actually has a functional purpose other than being convenient. And it's because on the backside, that extra foam thickness pushes up against the cable so hard that if it didn't just uh, hinge in, you would have issues closing it because the cable is hitting the foam. So it actually is functional. But the thing I want to point out, so there's a side panel. There's no, there's no window in that panel. There's a windowed version, of course. There's for everything. But you pull this off, and behind the windowless side panel, there is a feature which is purely for aesthetic purposes. That's the power supply shroud. Power supply shrouds are made for hiding cables and power supplies because they're the ugliest part of your PC. You already can't see the thing. You can't see the cables because there's a steel wall in front of it. So to put a power supply shroud here really just kind of inhibits the build process. It inhibits airflow in ways which we have shown previously are actually important. And it's really for no gain. Now, uh, you might say it looks nicer, but then again, I would ask, are you looking at it through that window? And if so, can I have your superpowers? The only reason you'd really want this thing is for the tempered glass variant. And that's fine. If you want it, that's a subjective thing. We're not going to argue with you. That's, that's totally up to you. Uh, with the tempered glass panel, however, keep in mind that you lose the foam. So you do lose, I mean, it's got, let's see, foam on all panels. So you lose uh, maybe 15, 20% of the foam on the case, the silence focused case, in the most, actually more than that, because if you're just going by panel size, it's quite significant. So it's probably closer to 40% of the foam just for a window. And I guess at that point, I, our suggestion would be to look at what you want in a case and then evaluate other options on the market because it is kind of missing the point on this one. But anyway, 130 bucks for the case with the steel panel at least. There's a windowed version. Inside's pretty standard. Be Quiet is efficient in reusing tooling and they've done that again here in some areas. So uh, the case is fairly familiar and I guess we can talk through the rest of it in Patrick's build notes before getting through the thermals noise. And the conclusion, I'll also note one more thing that's pretty important for the thermal section here. There are two fans, 
and they are the uh, Pure Wings 2 140mm fans. There's one in the front, one in the rear, and the one in the front is the important one. That one is positioned pretty low in the case. It's right on top of the power supply shroud, so almost all of its air is going to be pulled by the GPU, by the video card, before the CPU can ever get access to it. And the CPU fan really can't hope to fight the pressure of the video card fans that are so close to that front intake. So keep that in mind. That means the CPU thermals will be higher in the stock configuration than the GPU thermals comparatively. The 601 comes with orange, black, or silver trim and is sold with either one steel, one glass panel, or two identical panels. We prefer the non-windowed variety, which is what we received for review. The major selling point of Be Quiet's cases is silence, achieved in part with a heavy layer of noise damping foam on the case panels, and if that accomplishes anything at all, then replacing half of it with glass won't help, because it's not like they're putting the foam on the glass. The foam is one centimeter thick, it's shaped into tiny noise baffles, and it fully covers the inner surfaces of the front, the top, and the sides of the case. The attention to detail on where the foam goes is pretty extensive. The concept of noise damping foam is based in basic science. With a lot of small divots in the material, the higher frequency sound waves can bounce around within the foam indents and lose energy. This theoretically reduces noise escaping the case, but primarily changes the type of noise to reduce shorter wavelength exposure to the user. Long wavelength exposure remains largely unaffected by foam like this, and is more affected by thickness of material, like thicker aluminum or steel paneling. Visually, the 601 is similar to the rest of Be Quiet's cases, with beveled corners and angular strips of trim, but they don't appear to be reusing old parts. Given how elaborate Be Quiet's cases usually are, with invertible layouts and removable hard drive bays and rubber grommets crammed in everywhere, it's impressive how low Be Quiet keeps cost on the silent base and pure base lines, considering the rest of the features. Obviously, some parts, like the hard drive bays, are shared, and they only have a few case models in production at any given time. But it's sort of bizarre in this respect that buying a Ryzen Tech Ophion and adding two Pure Wings 2 fans to it would cost about as much as the 601 does with larger versions of those fans already installed. This speaks partially to efficiency of min-maxing the tooling presently deployed, something that Be Quiet does well. NTXT's H700i introduced a quick button ejection system for side panels that we found clever and intuitive, and it looks like Be Quiet is trying to do something similar. The Silent Base 601 implements this on both side panels, even in the windowed version of the case, which is a notable improvement over the thumb screws used in the company's own Darkbase Pro 900. Pressing the buttons to release the panels allows them to hinge out just enough so that they can be pulled upwards. That keeps the panels from flopping out and onto the floor, but the natural instinct is still to try and pull the panels out rather than up, so keep this in mind. It's still kind of a novelty, but it serves more of a purpose for Be Quiet than it would for other manufacturers because of that thick noise damping foam. With normal side panels, it can be difficult to get the cables and foam to all squeeze together enough to slide them into place, and this installation practice helps offset that. There's no magnetic front door like the one on the Darkbase 900, but the metal cover over the front filter does easily slide up and out. The bottom filter ejects from the front of the case rather than the back, which is always a welcome feature. Other small quality of life features that deserve note or praise are the removable power supply frame and a top fan radiator mount that slides out from the side. This mount is particularly nice, and it's possible to slide it out partially, install a radiator, and not need to take the whole thing out of the case. The fan controller is three speed and can handle up to three fans. Like the Darkbase 700, the 601 crams the controller switch into a former USB port in the front panel. We tend to not use fan controllers if we can avoid it, so we prefer this simple and unobtrusive controller to the fancier one found in the Darkbase Pro 900. It's difficult for case fans to move air through tight spaces and right angles, and we criticize cases that carelessly ignore this. The key there is carelessly ignore this. With the Silent Base 601, it's intentional. It's part of the design, and it trades ease of cooling for silence instead. Results are included in the thermal section later in this review, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out that the 601's front panel is more restrictive than something like the Mesh of IC. We draw the line of distinction at marketing. This case isn't marketed as a high airflow case. It does not promise to be the coolest case on the market, and instead it markets silence. These two features are often at odds, with Be Quiet choosing its namesake feature over cooling. 
Hail management space is limited. There's about three centimeters at best, but the foam and grommets and various bits of metal hardware cut into that. The one centimeter thick foam is soft, so it's technically possible to squeeze in more, but that risks leaving permanent dents in the foam, if that's something you care about. We'd recommend removing the hard drive cage and using the extra room inside the power supply shroud for cables, and if you need one, use Be Quiet's free-floating hard drive bays instead. Only one is included with the 601, but it's the same kind that the other Be Quiet cases use, and extras are available for $10. Up to five of these can fit in the case. We're not really big fans of DLC add-ons or cases, as we've said in the past. Be Quiet does include a sufficient amount of hard drive mounting support stock, it's just it's not where we want it. The trouble is that it's in places we'd rather leave open for cables, given how tight the paneling is here. Moving on to thermals and noise, the big one being noise for this towards the end of the charts. Stock configuration for the 601 is two Pure Wayne's 2 140mm fans, one in rear exhaust and one in front intake just above the power supply shroud, both plugged into the motherboard and set to max speed. Additional tasks were done with no front panel, orienting the GPU vertically and using the fan controller at minimum speed. The vertical GPU mount is clearly only intended to be used with the windowed version of the case, and there's less clearance in our version thanks to the foam, so performance is worse than it would be with a window. Removing the front panel here means that the metal cover is taken off of the front, but we leave the filter and the rest of the panel in place. So, time to get into the charts. We're starting with just a bunch of Be Quiet cases, and then we'll move on to comparative testing between competitors. For the stock, Silent Base 601, average CPU temperature during torture testing was 62.5 degrees Celsius over ambient. Using the fan controller to lower the speed to level 1 raised thermals to 72.9 degrees over ambient, which is obviously a very poor use case. These results illustrate that you really should only be using these low speed settings for idle or browsing type work, not for gaming or heavy loads. This is illustrated by all the other Be Quiet devices with low fan speeds too, including the Dark Base 700. For the Silent Base 601, removing the front panel lowered the temperature to 54.1 degrees over ambient. The front panel obstructs airflow heavily, but it's also clear that the fan is still able to effectively cool at max speed, even with the obstruction. Mounting the GPU vertically raised the temperature a couple of degrees from baseline, but that test has more relevance to the GPU thermal section. The baseline 62.5 degree temperature is one of the warmest on the chart when we look comparatively at other cases, right around the Antec P8 in performance. For reference, we previously described the Antec P8 as having the cooling capacity of a toaster, so this isn't a good part of the chart to occupy. The Dark Base Pro 900's Delta T result was about 4 degrees lower, but it is a larger case with more breathing room and more fans. Even 54.1 degrees Celsius without the front panel cover isn't terribly low, just about on par with the stock Meshify C. The single intake fan is aimed much more directly at the GPU than the CPU cooler when looking at the Silent Base 601 more closely, so that's where all of our air is going. We'll have to look at GPU performance results to prove that. Really competitive cooling in this case would require two or more fans added to it, but that would also generate more noise, beginning to negate the silence focus of the case, so it's a difficult spot to be in. We need to look at some more numbers, including noise numbers, before we reach anything conclusive. Be quiet can't be dinged too hard for being warm when the entire goal is silence, not cooling. Moving on to the GPU test with just be quiet cases for now. GPU thermals averaged 52.8 degrees Celsius over ambient in the SB601's torture test. This was lowered a few degrees to 49.3 degrees Celsius delta T by removing the front panel, raised to 57.7 degrees by lowering the case fan speed, and raised again to 62.2 degrees by mounting the GPU vertically. Mounting a GB vertically flush with the side panel will always worsen cooling, and there's absolutely no reason to do it in a case with no window. With the window, reserve it for open loop solutions. Comparatively, 52.8 degrees delta T over ambient is a bit below the center of the chart, actually below the other Be Quiet cases we've tested, and closer to the Corsair 270R in performance. It's not impressive, but we still have noise to look forward to. That'll be at the end, and this is a major opportunity for redemption of performance. Firestrike Extreme stress testing raised GPU temperature to 55.3 degrees Celsius over ambient, a more mediocre rank than in the torture test, but still not bad. That's on the same level as the Silverstone KL07 and PMO2, two intensely forgettable cases. It's also better than the Dark Base Pro 900, but not nearly as good as the Revision 2 of that case. The Silent Base 601 CPU thermals in Firestrike are remarkably high, up there with recent SL600M testing, where the CPU is largely compartmentalized and isolated by a wall of GPU below it. CPU temperature in Blender CPU rendering test was 41.5 degrees over ambient, one of the warmest temperatures on the chart. Like the torture test results, this is equivalent to the Antec P8 and not distant from the BitPhoenix Enso. Despite a silence focus, 
high-end machines with air coolers would benefit from an additional fan or from a brute force liquid cooling approach. GPU temperature in the Blender GPU render test was 25.6 degrees Celsius, another decent GPU result on the same level as the H500V Mesh and stock H700i. Be Quiet gets some redemption here, ranking in the upper half of performance in the Blender GPU test. As a reminder, this happens largely because that front fan is centered on the GPU, benefiting it tremendously. Noise suppression is the main attraction here, and the Silent Base 601 delivers. We measured it at 36 dBA, with the fans at maximum speed, which is where most of those thermal results were recorded. That puts the Silent Base 601 at around the S2, the Lancol 1, and the Define C in acoustic performance. Noise measured at 32.8 dBA with the fan speed minimized via the controller. The max noise level is comparable to the Lancol 1 or Dark Base 700 at the level 3 setting, while the minimum is closer to the Dark Base Pro 900's minimum noise level. Note again that the minimum setting is really only suitable for low load work. The case overall, it's really good build quality. So definitely Be Quiet's done a good job just in terms of the construction. The hinged doors with the button for ejection is really nice. It's something that NDXT did on their cases previously. We liked it there, we like it here. So build quality overall, uh, job well done by Be Quiet. And this is, I mean, you can even just look at attention to detail. So for example, the fans, every screw for each of the fans has a rubber O-ring or washer basically between the screw and the case. And that's to help with small vibrations that you might get from the fan motor. It's a really small piece of of detail that a lot of case manufacturers don't care about, miss, don't think is important, whatever. But the point is Be Quiet does get this one every time and Be Quiet also goes through and hits basically everything else that they can think of that might cause vibration, uh, that might have a slight gap in it where noise can escape except for this one weird random hole in the back. But they do a good job as a company of really paying attention to those finer noise details that you kind of look at it, it's like a, a rubber rain around a screw. Okay, what does that really do for me? But it's really the sum of the parts in this case that makes for a better enclosure. Couldn't use the word case twice. Uh, so they've done well for build quality. Competitively, it's a rough market right now. 130 bucks puts me quite up against a whole lot of good options that we had on our charts. So depending on what you're looking for, uh, if you're looking for exactly this, something that's extremely silence focused, and you can maybe afford to budget for another fan in the front, you'll do pretty well for it. Uh, this really does deserve an additional fan in the front, we think, so that the CPU can get some air as well. If the CPU gets air from another top mounted or front mounted in the top fan, then both components will be acceptable. They're not gonna be great. They won't beat open front cases, but they'll be acceptable if your goal is silence. The next question is, well, okay, but if I just buy a case with a more open front panel, and then spin down the fan RPM to equivalent noise and match the DBA output or the DBA measurement, at what point am I then getting superior cooling for the same noise level? And that's something we're investigating for separate piece because it's an interesting question and, uh, and we're glad you didn't ask. But that's it for this case. I mean, 130 bucks, it's fine. Build quality is good. Thermal performance on the GPU is acceptable. Thermal performance on the CPU is not good. But if you buy an extra fan for the top in that front panel, it's fine, or it will be fine. Uh, it's just stock, it, it does not fare too well for sustained render loads on the CPU or, or sustained workload on the CPU. Just get that extra fan in there because it will be a bit hot. You could brute force it with the CLC, but relative to the CLC in other cases, it will, of course, still be hotter. So. I guess that's it for this one. Alternatives we will link in the article version of this, the review written by Patrick. That'll be linked in the description below. So you wanna check out his additional conclusion notes. You can see what he thought, what uh, other cases we might suggest. And as always, go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly. You can pick up this shirt for a little bit longer. This is the limited edition foil shirt that we have and will not be making again. So you can grab that on the store or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to get access to our behind the scenes videos. For Patreon backers, we just shot two today and are putting more uh, more focus on those going forward. So thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.